Today I've got some news about Sheikh Hamdan's love life that will surprise you. If you've been watching my videos, you know Sheikh Hamdan wrote a poem asking his second wife to come back to him. Unfortunately, his second wife didn't accept his request, leaving Sheikh Hamdan very sad. In another poem, he talks about how his father Sheikh Mohammed's kingdom is struggling because of this. Even Sheikh Hamdan's sister tried to convince the second wife to come back to Dubai, but she said no. Despite trying to fix things, the marriage ended and Sheikh Hamdan is heartbroken. On October 16, 2022, Sheikh Hamdan's second wife asked for a divorce, which was a big moment. The next day, Sheikh Hamdan shared another poem that was hard to understand, but I figured out what it means in another video. In the poem, Sheikh Hamdan accepts that his relationship is over. He talks about his deep love for her and respects his father. The last line shows that there's no way to fix things between Sheikh Hamdan's second wife and the royal family. The breakup happened because they couldn't agree on certain things. Reliable sources tell us these disagreements were the main reason for their split. As for their children, Sheikh Hamdan's sister will take care of them. Sheikh Hamdan has more rights to the children, which might seem unfair, but he's a good person and will make sure his second wife can see them. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. We always talk about the lives of famous and powerful people, and today, we've got a really interesting story for you. It's about Sheikh Hamdan and some big changes in his life. But first, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss any of our videos. We're going to take a close look at Sheikh Hamdan's life, especially after his divorce from his second wife, Hadiya Zen. This happened because Sheikh Muhammad, a very important person in his life, made the decision. It's a big deal because it changed a lot of things in his family. So, let's get into this story together. We're going to find out about the secrets and the behind-the-scenes stuff in Sheikh Hamdan's life. It's going to be like we're exploring a hidden world of a very rich and powerful family. Let's get started and see what we can find out. Alright, let's talk about Sheikh Hamdan's family life. I want to bring you in on something interesting about royal families like his. In Dubai, the personal life and public role of a royal are really connected. When Sheikh Hamdan married Sheikha Sheikha bint Said bin Thani Al Maktoum in 2019, it wasn't just about them getting married, it was also about their families coming together. In royal families, marriage is about more than just love. It's about traditions and power joining together. We don't know a lot about Sheikh Hamdan's private life with his family because they keep it pretty private, but we do know that family is super important for someone like him. You might be thinking, how does he handle being a public figure and also take care of his family? That's a tough one, and we can only guess, but it's clear that being a royal means handling a lot of responsibilities, and balancing family life is a big part of it. As we look into Sheikh Hamdan's life, Let's remember that there's more to being a royal than just the fancy title. They have their own personal stories, challenges, and relationships, just like anyone else. So, let's keep that in mind as we learn more about him. Let's talk about something you probably know a lot about, social media. I'm sure some of you have checked out Sheikh Hamdan's Instagram. It's full of cool stuff like his adventures, work, and sometimes bits of his personal life. But here's something to think about. Unlike other famous people who post a lot about their lives, Sheikh Hamdan is more private, especially about his family. This is pretty normal for royal families. They share some things but keep a lot of their personal life to themselves. For someone like Sheikh Hamdan with so many followers, every photo and caption is chosen for a reason. It's not just about what he shows us, but also what he doesn't. So, when you look at his posts, Remember that each one is just a small part of a bigger story. It's interesting, right? How he shows us some things but keeps others hidden. As we learn more about Sheikh Hamdan, remember that his social media is just one part of who he is. It gives us a peek into his life, but there's a lot more going on that we don't see. Let's stay curious as we keep exploring his story. Let's pause for a second and talk about something a bit tricky in the lives of royal people like Sheikh Hamdan. It might seem like their lives are pretty simple and problem-free, but actually it's a lot more complicated. In royal families, the choices they make aren't just about them. They can affect their whole family, traditions, and sometimes even their country. 
We don't have exact details about Sheikh Hamdan's personal issues or big family decisions, but it's pretty common for royals to deal with this kind of stuff. Their choices can change a lot more than just their own lives. I want you to think about how tough it must be to make decisions when they impact so many people. It's a lot of pressure, right? When we look into the lives of royals like Sheikh Hamdan, remember that their decisions are part of something bigger. They're thinking about a lot of things we might not see. So, whenever you hear about a choice made by someone like Sheikh Hamdan, remember there's probably a lot more to it. It's a really interesting and complicated world. Let's keep learning about it with an open mind. All right, everyone, we're coming to the end of our video, and I want to chat with you for a minute. We've just had a look at the life of Sheikh Hamdan, a mix of being a royal, following traditions, and being part of today's world. It's pretty different from most of our lives, and it's been great exploring it with you. Let's remember, Sheikh Hamdan isn't just a famous person. He's got a whole country looking up to him, and he's always in the public eye. But what we talked about today is just a small part of his whole story. His life is full of things we see, and lots more we don't. I hope this video made you think more about what goes on behind the scenes for people like Sheikh Hamdan. They've got really interesting lives, way beyond what we see in pictures and headlines. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you won't miss our next videos. Keep asking questions and looking for answers. There's always more to learn. See you next time. Let's talk about Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai. He's known to many as Fadza on Instagram, where he shares his life stories. In this video, we're focusing on how he is as a dad and a son, especially around Father's Day. In the United Arab Emirates, Father's Day is celebrated on June 21st, just like in many other countries. It's a special day to appreciate dads. Sheikh Hamdan is not just a royal figure, he's also a family man. He often posts about his life with his wife, Sheikha Sheikha bint Saeed and their twins, Sheikh Rashid and Sheikha Sheikha. He also shows the strong bond he has with his own dad, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who is a big leader in the UAE. Our video will give you a peek into Sheikh Hamdan's family life, showing how he enjoys being a father and the special moments he shares with his family. His transition into fatherhood began with his marriage to Sheikha Sheikha bin Saeed in May 2019, marking a significant milestone in his personal life. The couple welcomed their twins, Sheikh Rashid and Sheikha Sheikha, on May 20, 2021, a new dimension to Sheikh Hamdan's life. The birth of the twins was a joyous occasion, not just for the family but also for the people of the UAE, who closely follow the lives of their royal family. Sheikh Hamdan has since shared glimpses of his life as a father on his Instagram account, where he regularly updates his followers with heartwarming moments. From these posts, it is evident that Sheikh Hamdan deeply values the time spent with his children, cherishing each moment of their growth and development. One of the key aspects of Sheikh Hamdan's approach to fatherhood is his desire to share his passions with his children. This is most notable in his love for horses and the running of the Godolphin stables. He introduced Sheikh Rashid and Sheikha Shaikha to this world, symbolizing a passing down of interests and traditions. The family's visit to the Thoroughbred Bay Colt Adyar at Newmarket, Suffolk, was a significant moment, blending the worlds of family and passion. Another highlight of Sheikh Hamdan's fatherhood journey is his effort to expose his children to diverse experiences. This was evident when he shared pictures of the family enjoying a day at the beach and exploring the Dubai Safari Park. These moments not only reflect the joys of fatherhood, but also Sheikh Hamdan's commitment to providing a well-rounded upbringing for his twins. Sheikh Hamdan often shares moments from his childhood on his Instagram account, which paint a picture of a close-knit relationship. These shared memories and photographs show a deep connection between the two, marked by mutual respect and admiration. The bond they share is not only personal, but also professional, as they work together in governing and representing Dubai. One significant aspect of their relationship is their shared interests and activities. For instance, Sheikh Hamdan and Sheikh Mohammed have been seen together on hunting trips, an activity that demonstrates their mutual love for nature and adventure. This shared interest has undoubtedly strengthened their bond, allowing them father-son time away from the demands of their public roles. Furthermore, Sheikh Hamdan's love for animals, especially dogs, is well documented, and this is a trait he seems to share with his father. A photograph from Sheikh Hamdan's childhood, showing him with a furry friend, reflects the early beginnings of this shared interest. Such moments are indicative of the values and interests passed down from father to son. Another poignant aspect of their relationship is Sheikh Hamdan's reverence for his grandfather, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al-Nahyan, the UAE's founding father. He often pays tribute to Sheikh Zayed 
Zayed alongside his father, showcasing a deep respect for his heritage and family legacy. This respect for their shared history further solidifies the bond between Sheikh Hamdan and Sheikh Mohammed. Sheikh Hamdan's relationship with his father, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, is well documented and deeply revered. This bond is not just based on familial ties, but also on a shared commitment to their country's heritage and future. Photographs of Sheikh Hamdan and Sheikh Mohammed, whether on trips or in casual settings, depict a strong connection rooted in mutual respect and shared values. The birth of Sheikh Hamdan's twins, Sheikh Rashid and Sheikha Sheikha, in May 2021, added a new layer to the family dynamic, introducing Sheikh Muhammad to the role of a grandfather. Sheikh Hamdan has shared several heartwarming moments of Sheikh Muhammad with his grandchildren, capturing the joy and pride of the elder statesman. These images not only celebrate the family's milestones, but also offer a glimpse into their private lives, showcasing moments of tenderness and joy. In early 2023, the family welcomed another member, Baby Muhammad, named Muhammad bin Hamdan bin Muhammad Al Maktoum. Sheikh Hamdan revealed this special occasion on his social media, sharing a touching moment of Sheikh Muhammad holding his newborn grandchild. This event marked another significant moment for the Al Maktoum family, strengthening the bond across generations. The Al Maktoum family also shares a love for the outdoors, an interest that Sheikh Hamdan often includes in his family time. He has shared moments of them together, enjoying nature and participating in outdoor activities. These shared experiences underscore the importance of family traditions and the passing down of passions and interests from one generation to the next. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. How many wives does the Crown Prince of Dubai have? Polygamy in Islamic culture. Polygamy, specifically polygyny, where a man is allowed to have multiple wives, is a practice rooted in Islamic culture and is addressed in Islamic religious texts. It is important to understand this practice within its cultural and religious context. Quranic Basis In Islam, the Quran provides the fundamental guidance on polygamy. The Quran, in Surah An-Nisa 4.3, states that a Muslim man may marry up to four women, but only under the condition that he can treat them all justly and equally. This scripture is often cited as the religious basis for polygamy in Islamic culture. Conditions and Limitations The practice comes with strict conditions. The Quran emphasizes justice and fairness among wives. If a man fears that he cannot deal justly with multiple wives, he is advised to marry only one. The stipulation of equal treatment is crucial and includes financial support, time, and emotional care. Historical Context Historically, polygamy was practiced in many cultures, and was not unique to Islam. In the early Islamic era, polygamy was also a way to ensure the welfare of widows and orphans, especially after wars which left many without financial support. Modern Interpretation and Practice The practice of polygamy varies greatly in the modern Muslim world. In some countries, it's relatively common, while in others, it's rare. Factors influencing this variation include local cultural practices, economic conditions, and the laws of the country. Some Islamic nations have additional legal requirements for a man to marry more than one wife, such as obtaining consent from a previous wife or demonstrating financial capability. Legal status in different countries. The legality of polygamy varies across Muslim-majority countries. Some, like Saudi Arabia and the UAE, allow it without significant restrictions, whereas others, like Tunisia and Turkey, have banned the practice. There are also countries where it's legally permitted but not widely practiced due to social changes and economic challenges. Social Perspectives Within the Muslim community, there are diverse opinions about polygamy. Some view it as a part of Islamic tradition that is still relevant, while others argue that it was context-specific and not intended as a general rule. There's also a growing debate about women's rights and gender equality in relation to polygamy. Global Muslim Communities In countries where Islam is not the majority religion, Muslim communities must navigate their religious practices with the laws of the land, which often do not permit polygamy. This has led to varied adaptations and interpretations of Islamic teachings on marriage in different cultural contexts. Sheikh Hamdan's Marital Status Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid al-Maktoum 
The Crown Prince of Dubai is a figure of significant public interest, and his personal life, particularly his marital status, often attracts attention. Here's what is known based on public information. Marriage announcement. Sheikh Hamdan, also popularly known by his poetic pseudonym Faza, was reported to have been married in May 2019. His wedding was a private affair, and the details were not widely publicized. The marriage was part of a larger celebration that also included the weddings of his two brothers. Private ceremony. The wedding ceremony was private and traditional. As per Emirati culture and royal family customs, such events are often kept away from the public eye. The details about the ceremony, including the venue and the specifics of the event, were not extensively shared with the media or the public. Spouse's identity. Sheikh Hamdan married Sheikha Sheikha bint Saeed bin Thani al Maktoum. Little is publicly known about Sheikha Sheikha, as she, like many members of the royal families in the Gulf region, maintains a private life away from media spotlight, public appearances, and social media. Sheikh Hamdan is active on social media, particularly on platforms like Instagram, where he shares aspects of his public and adventurous life. However, he is known to keep his personal life, including his marital life, private. He rarely shares information or images related to his family or private affairs. Children. Sheikh Hamdan is known to have children. He announced the birth of his twins, a boy and a girl named Rashid and Sheikha, in May 2021. The announcement was made through his social media, where he shared a picture of the newborn's feet. More recently, in 2023, he announced the birth of another child. Lack of further details. Beyond these facts, there is limited information available to the public about Sheikh Hamdan's marital life. He has not disclosed more details about his family or his wife, adhering to the privacy norms typically observed by members of the Gulf royal families. Public curiosity and speculation. Due to his high profile status and the private nature of his personal life, there is often public curiosity and speculation about Sheikh Hamdan's marital status and family life. However, in the absence of official information, these remain speculative. Royal privacy. The concept of privacy for members of royal families, including Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Crown Prince of Dubai, is a significant aspect of their public life. Here are key points regarding royal privacy based on public information. Cultural norms and traditions. In many royal families, especially in the Gulf region, there is a strong cultural norm to keep personal and family matters private. This tradition is deeply rooted in respect for personal boundaries and the desire to maintain a distinction between public duties and private life. Media approach to royal families. The media often respects these boundaries, especially in regions where there is a close relationship between the state and the royal family. In the UAE, for instance, the media typically refrains from intruding into the personal lives of the royal family members unless information is officially released. Public appearances and communication. Members of royal families, including Sheikh Hamdan, often appear in public for official duties, state functions, and charity events. While they are visible in these public roles, they usually do not discuss their private lives in these settings. Their communication is often focused on their public roles and responsibilities. Social media presence. Many royals, like Sheikh Hamdan, use social media platforms to connect with the public. However, they generally use these platforms to highlight their work, cultural events, or personal interests, rather than to share intimate details of their private lives. Sheikh Hamdan, for instance, is known for his Instagram posts showcasing his adventurous lifestyle and love for sports and nature. Respect for privacy. There is a general understanding and respect for the privacy of royal families among the public and the press. Intrusive speculation or reporting about their private lives is often viewed as disrespectful or in poor taste. Legal protections. In some countries, there are legal protections in place to safeguard the privacy of royal family members. These can include laws against paparazzi-style photography or reporting on private matters without consent. Global variations. 
The extent of privacy and how it is maintained varies globally among royal families. In some European monarchies, for example, there is a greater openness about personal lives, whereas in the Gulf monarchies, a higher level of privacy is maintained. Balancing Act Royals often balance their public and private roles. They participate in public engagements and use their status to promote charitable causes or cultural initiatives while keeping their personal lives, including aspects like marriages and children, away from the public eye. Once upon a time in the mesmerizing land of Dubai, a captivating story unfolded that captured the attention of people from all walks of life, including high school students like yourself. It's a tale filled with love, duty, and the intricacies of royal lineage. Get ready to embark on an enthralling journey as we dive into the enigmatic relationship between Sheikh Hamdan and his captivating wife, Sheikha Sheikha Thani Al Maktoum. In the year 2019, amidst an atmosphere of anticipation and grandeur, Sheikh Hamdan, the charismatic Crown Prince of Dubai, exchanged vows with Sheikha Sheikha Thani, forever binding their destinies together. Their wedding was a spectacle of opulence and magnificence that left the world awestruck. However, beneath the surface of this extravagant celebration lies a web of fascinating circumstances and untold stories. Allow me to introduce you to Sheikha Sheikha Thani, a woman whose aura is shrouded in mystery and grace. Born in 1982, Sheikha Sheikha, who is now 38 years old, possesses a captivating charm that has enraptured hearts near and far. What makes their relationship even more intriguing is the fact that Sheikha Sheikha is Sheikh Hamdan's first cousin, intertwining their lives in a unique blend of love and duty. But let's take a step back in time, because the twists and turns of this tale are deeply intertwined with the Al Maktoum dynasty's rich tapestry. It is said that Sheikha Sheikha was initially destined to marry Sheikh Rashid, the former Crown Prince of Dubai. However, fate had other plans in store. Driven by his own desires, Sheikh Rashid made a surprising decision to pursue a different path and marry another woman instead. This choice would have far-reaching consequences that reverberated throughout history, shaping the lives of those connected to him. Tragedy struck in 2015 when Sheikh Rashid's life was tragically cut short, leaving a void in the heart of Dubai. As the city mourned his loss, a new chapter unfolded with Sheikh Hamdan's ascent to the position of Crown Prince. This significant moment thrust him into the limelight, carrying the weight of both power and responsibility on his shoulders. However, fate had another surprise in store for Sheikh Hamdan. Along with his newfound role as Crown Prince came the expectation to marry a princess, a duty enshrined by tradition and the weight of a lineage steeped in history. It is at this juncture that Sheikh Hamdan found himself engaged to Sheikha Sheikha, his first cousin. Yet, despite the outward appearance of a destined union that would bring together prominent branches of the Al Maktoum family, Sheikh Hamdan carried within him doubts and reservations that clouded his happiness. You might wonder why Sheikha Sheikha agreed to marry Sheikh Hamdan, despite his uncertainty and unease. To understand the complexities of their situation, we must delve into the traditions and customs that govern the Al Maktoum family. Within this esteemed lineage, it has become a cherished tradition to form alliances between close relatives, strengthening the bonds of kinship and perpetuating ancestral connections. Throughout generations, these practices have left an indelible mark on the lives of those entwined in their intricate web. Consider, for instance, Sheikh Hamdan's late father, Sheikh Rashid. He too embarked on a matrimonial journey with his first cousin, Sheikha Hind, who happened to be the daughter of his mother's sister. Their union, guided by destiny's hand, brought both joy and challenges as they navigated the intricate path of love within the context of their royal duties. It is within this backdrop that Sheikha Hind's sister, Sheikha Hesse, enters the narrative. And so, from the lineage of Sheikha Hesse, emerges Sheikha Sheikha Thani, carrying the weight of tradition and the burden of ancestral expectations. The cycle continues as Sheikh Hamdan finds himself compelled to honor the familial legacy by marrying his mother's sister's daughter, following in the footsteps of his predecessors. Yet whispers carried by the winds of the desert tell tales of a strained relationship between Sheikh Hamdan and Sheikha Sheikha. Gossip abounds, suggesting that the two have chosen to part ways, 
burdened by the pain of a separation. These rumors, swirling through the opulent halls of Dubai, only served to deepen the intrigue surrounding their relationship. However, let us tread cautiously, for the truth often hides behind the veiled curtain of speculation. While it may be true that Sheikh Hamdan and Sheikh Sheikha are living apart, their hearts cloaked in melancholy, official confirmation of their divorce remains elusive. The shroud of mystery enveloping their union adds an extra layer of enigma to this tale, leaving us yearning for answers yet to be revealed. As this captivating story draws to a close, we find ourselves immersed in a narrative that weaves together themes of love, duty and tradition, inviting us to explore the complexities of royal life where personal desires intersect with societal expectations. It's a tale that whispers of heartbreak and resilience, leaving us hungry for more. In the depths of this captivating journey, we hope to have sparked your curiosity, igniting a desire for knowledge and understanding. If this tale has enchanted you, if the threads of the narrative have woven themselves into the fabric of your imagination, we encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll remain connected to the secrets and stories that unfold within the realm of Dubai's royalty. And don't forget to hit the bell icon below to ensure you never miss a moment of our enchanting tales. Thank you for joining us on this mesmerizing expedition into the lives of Sheikh Hamdan and Sheikha Sheikha Thani Al Maktoum. Who is Faza's wife, Saeed bin Tani Al Maktoum? This report sheds light on it. The top question every fan wants to know is, is Faza married? He is married to Sheikha Sheikha bin Saeed bin Tani Al Maktoum. They do not live together. The marriage was more of a business deal instead of a marriage for love. Can he marry anyone he wants? Apparently not. Does he have any kids? Yes. As of May 2021, Sheikh Hamdan welcomed the birth of his twins, Rashid bin Hamdan bin Muhammad al Moktum and Sheikha. Sheikha bin Hamdan bin Muhammad al Moktum, who is Sa'a III? Who is his sunshine or beloved? Sa'a III is just a drink from the fuel bar. His sunshine or beloved is unknown. Who are his poems about? Are they about Sheikha? Faza is like any artist inspired by various things. Some of his poems are not even about anyone in particular. Some are about things like Dubai or his animals. They are definitely not about Sheikha. Is he dating insert name here? He is such a public individual that he keeps his personal life privity. He has been tied to various females claiming to be his girlfriend, wife or fiancée. Are they lying? Yes. How do I know? 
anyone publicly claiming to be tied to him is lying because he would not be okay with someone talking about his personal life on any public forum. This isn't a question but a warning. Hamdan would never contact you on YouTube, Instagram, or any other form of social media and ask you for money. You are being scammed. There is also no such thing as a royalty card or Dubai membership card. Do not give anyone claiming to be him a cent. Many people question his marriage, saying that he is not married anymore to Sheikha Said Thani, but that is not the case. He is actually very happy with her. He is married, and we know that a lot of the time people have this aspiration, if you like, to have Sheikh Hamdan Faza in their lives, but he is taken. That's the bottom line. He is taken, and so... I mean, if you're wondering whether you can marry him or not, no, there is absolutely no chance until now. Here is what gets very interesting. Until Shah al Kamdan agrees to have a second wife, which is going to be very much likely his father. But so far, we have not seen him showing or expressing any interest in getting married twice. His wife, Sheikha Saida Thani, is his cousin. They grew up together, they went to school together. We do not have her pictures in public. And the reason for that is simple. He wants his wife to be a precious pearl. So he hides her behind veils. You do not see her beauty because the moment you see someone's beauty, for a woman, I'm talking about a woman, you judge them and you give them evil looks, evil eyes, and you become envious and you become jealous and you become judgmental. So to avoid all of these problems, caricatures, why don't we just have them hidden behind veils? And this is exactly what Sheikh Hamdan Al-Faza is doing. We do not see his wife, we do not see even his father's wife, Sheikh Hind al-Maktum, the first wife he loves so much. In other words, in Arabian culture, if you love someone, it equals to hiding them, protecting their dignity, honor, and respect. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about relationship issues that Faza might have, so let's jump in. Number one is communication. Let's actually play the video at the same time. So communication if you can actually master the art of communicating with your partner, with your wife, with your husband, that would solve so many problems. Trust me, you need to be learning how to communicate, how to talk, how to understand, how to listen. When we talk about communication, it doesn't mean you are the one doing all the talking. It also means, yes, you talk, but it also means that you listen to the other person. If you do not listen, they do not feel connected. They will not bond with you and therefore the marriage, the relationship will break apart. When we talk to our partner, so they say, let's say, this is a very beautiful day. This is what your husband said to you, right? Sheikh Hamdan Faza, it could be with his wife. Instead of saying, yeah, it's a nice day, we should go out. When he said, it's a nice day, you completely ignored that. And you say, we have to do grocery. And your husband, he feels like, oh, she doesn't listen to me, what I'm saying, he's expressing a feeling, on the other hand, you are telling him something completely different, and that feeling in his heart is completely gone. So you need to listen to that person, your husband, your wife, and therefore you'll be able to communicate effectively. Shahamdan Afaza, does he do that? I'm 100% sure that he does communicate with his wife the best way possible because this is the art. This is something you can always learn. The next thing that you must do is that or problems you need to avoid, or if Shahamdan Afaza he has this issue in his marriages. A lot of the time we argue just because of, you know, for our ego. We do not really fight each other because that other person is super wrong. I mean, even if they're wrong, you do not argue with them, right? You correct them in the best way possible. But what happens is a lot of the time we pick up an argument just because that person didn't agree and it hurt my ego. Oh, how can she disagree with me? How come she doesn't see my point? Or how come he doesn't see my point? So, as a result, you feel this, you know, seething resentment in yourself that comes out in the form of violence, you know, anger, angry behavior, rude behavior, and therefore the marriage will break apart. So again, Shikham Dan Faza, does he have this kind of arguments with his wife? I'm pretty sure, just like anybody else, any other couple he does have, but the best husband are those who will solve this problem, staying close. With time, every long-term relationship will change. Some of what used to seem most important might begin not to even phase you anymore. Additionally, as things in the relationship change, you and your partner may also be changing in different ways, evolving as individuals. 
So we have seen, what does it basically mean? It means that everything that you do, every day you wake up, the first thing that comes to your mind is how to be more clingy. We have seen clingy behaviors can actually destroy marriages, relationships. And this is why you need to grow as an individual. You need to have a skill set. You need to learn new things. Maybe you should know how to drive, you know, or how to garden. Like there are so many things, different hobbies that you can take on in order for you to remain confident, in order to remain happy within yourself and happy with things that you're doing instead of always being clingy and depending on your partner, your husband or your wife for your happiness. You need to grow as an individual. This is very, very important. Shahamdar Fadza does. He do that. I'm pretty sure he does. And this is why we have seen him. I mean, obviously he's the leader right in Dubai. He will do his own thing. And at the end of the day, he will come back to his wife and they will have... At the same time, his wife is very, very independent. She does her own thing at the palace, you know, at home. And she waits for Shahamdana Faza when he comes home to take care of the children and they have good time. This is a very, very important quality of a person who is a good partner, good wife. Number four is intimacy, which is very, very important. If you are not romantic with your partner, like, let's say, you see your wife or your husband and you go like, yeah, you know, this guy, I don't even want to talk to him, let alone being intimate, right? This is a very, very bad thing and a red flag. If you are not having a good time occasionally, completely okay. You do not force it. But if it goes on for a very long time and you don't really talk, you are not intimate with your partner. That means something is wrong. On the other hand, also, at the same time, even if you are close to your partner emotionally and you talk to him or her all the time, you do not have intimacy, then it is not good. Intimacy is a different level. It shows how close you are. It shows how healthy your relationship is. Shaham Danavaza, we know he has twins now, so obviously he was intimate. Now we do not know because, you know, this is a private matter. But my understanding is that Sheikh Hamdan Faza is very, very caring. He is very, very intimate with his wife. Are we going to see more babies from Sheikh Hamdan Faza? That is something I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know in the comment section below and tell me whether we will see more twins or babies from Sheikh Hamdan Faza infidelity. Whoa, that's a big one. If you see the number five point here, infidelity, it is a big one. These days, I have seen so many families, though so many marriages, they're breaking apart just because of this one thing, one issue, which is infidelity. Sheikh Hamdan Faza, he talks to many women. You might say, oh, he is not loyal to his wife, but that is not the case. You can talk to many women, you can talk to many men. As long as you're doing it within the boundary, you can communicate with the rest of the world. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm married, so I'm not going to be talking to anybody, any man or any woman. Oh, this is a big no, 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 don't take it that way. Be open-minded, talk to everyone, but at the same time, make sure that you're not crossing the limit. Families, you know, after they get married or before they get married, they get to know each other. Even during the phase of knowing each other, people cheat on each other like they're not loyal. They cheat. And therefore, even before a lot of marriages take place, they go separate ways, both, you know, husband and wife, or both, you know, the, the guy and the, the girl. So you need to make sure that you are loyal to your husband, which is very, very important at the same time the husband is loyal to the wife. Do you check on him or her for phone number? You know, and see what they are up to? You don't go to that extreme, however you do, will notice. So live a normal life, okay? Without investigating, without even thinking about whether your husband or wife is cheating on you. Just live a normal life. If they're cheating on you, you will notice it, okay? You will notice it, you know, later day, earlier, you'll notice it. Money is a big thing. If you do not have money, that means you're not able to sustain your relationship in the long term. I'm not saying you have to have like millions of dollars, but if you're always broke and you are borrowing money from other people and you are spending your money on expensive, extravagant things, then this is going to end your marriage. Money matters must be handled at the same time by both partners, so the couple must consult, especially when they're buying something for the house and it's a big expense. Both of them should actually consult and talk about the decision that, yeah, I'm going to be buying this car or buying this house. What do you think? Then the other person will give their opinion. And based on that, you try to reach an agreement, you know, settle the issue, but definitely talk. 
If sometimes they don't like it, they hate it, forget about it, okay? Just don't do it. Because if they don't like it at all and they're telling you, and then you still spend the money on that. For example, your husband doesn't like you to buy a car and he's completely against it. Listen to him. You know, respect his opinion. It is not about, oh yeah, I talked to him, he doesn't agree. Well, who cares? I'm going to buy the car, right? It doesn't work that way. If he says, yeah, I do not want you to buy the car, regardless what reason he gives you, listen and respect sometimes. And the same thing you should also expect from your husband if you're a wife. So money matters needs to be settled, respected. That way you guys will not go broke. Even if you are broke, at least both of you have tried. Nobody can blame other person, accusing other person. Oh, you didn't listen to me. This is why we're in this mess. This is why it is important. Then I'll also share this number eight point, showing gratitude. Everyone likes feeling appreciated for their efforts, whether you have a fast-paced career. So gratitude will also come with the point number, where I mentioned listening communication skill. Number one point that I mentioned, you must show gratitude by listening. You can actually show that. Yeah, when you're listening to your partner, your husband, your wife, means you appreciate their presence in your life, so listen to them more and more. At the same time, appreciate the things that they bring in your life. You know, doing little things, appreciate, take notice, and, and don't just tell them, oh, I appreciate it, but also do things for them if you are just saying with your lips doing nothing. Yeah, I love you making money, but in return, I'm just going to be a couch potato. Doesn't work that way. You need to do something for that person, investing yourself, involving yourself, doing things okay, not just saying it again. Doing things is more important than talking about it all the time.